from Kansas is not wrong. In the 237 years of our nation's history, I don't know that there has been a more shameful day in the United States Senate than today. What we just witnessed was a travesty. It was a travesty to the United States Constitution, and it was a travesty to the American people. And it's important to understand why the Democrats did what they did. We're here on the Senate floor right now, but I want the record to reflect. I'm going to do a very accurate count of the number of Democrats who are with, with us. That would be zero, other than the presiding officer, and somebody has to preside. Not a single Democrat senator chose to come to this floor and listen to one word of evidence. When it comes to the Constitution, the Democrats concluded that Joe Biden and Alejandro Mayorkas defying federal law, ignoring the text of the statute, deliberately releasing criminal illegal aliens over and over and over again, that's just hunky-dory. You can't impeach him for that. Every Democrat just voted. By the way, every cabinet member, guess what? You've just been given a blank slate. Ignore the law. When Democrats are in charge of the Senate, the entire cabinet could ignore the law. It is no longer impeachable in Democrat wonderland when a member of the executive branch openly defies the law. By the way, every Democrat just voted that way. They didn't hear one word of argument. The majority leader didn't stand up and say, here's the reason why it's okay. No, he didn't present that argument. They didn't read a brief. Nobody wrote a brief. They didn't care enough to know what Senator Lee just laid out, that the Biden Department of Justice went in front of the U.S. Supreme Court and said if the executive defies the law, the answer is impeachment. The willingness of every Democrat to be blatantly hypocritical. Just last year, the Biden Justice Department said, no, 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 you can't sue in court when we, the Biden administration, defy the law, the answer is impeachment. And like three-card money, every Senate Democrat said, no, 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 the answer is not impeachment. I don't know what it is. Actually, I do know what it is. There's only one answer left, which is everyone who is unhappy about the open border shows up in November and to use the phrase, throw the bums out. Because if you're not willing to do your job, is there not one senator on that side of the aisle who cares enough to honor the Constitution? By the way, the second article they threw out said lying to Congress is not a high crime or misdemeanor. It's not impeachable. Now, as the senator from South Carolina pointed out, Bill Clinton was impeached for lying under oath. And you know what happened? And he was ultimately acquitted. But after a full trial, where they heard the evidence, where the Senate did its job, by the way, one of the impeachment managers was Senator Graham, who presented that evidence right here on this floor. And you know what? Before Bill Clinton, there's a guy named Walter Nixon. You may not know who Walter Nixon is. Walter Nixon was a federal judge who was convicted of perjury. He was from Mississippi. He was convicted of perjury in front of a grand jury, and he was impeached. And it went to the Senate, and the Senate convicted him and removed him from the bench. So you want to know what the precedents were prior to today? You commit a crime, lying under oath, perjury, it is a high crime or misdemeanor that is impeachable. No more. Because understand the Democrats' rule here. This is all about, this is not about the Constitution. None of them care. By the way, we repeatedly moved. Let's go into debate. Hear the other side of the argument. Nope. Look, the famous three monkeys, hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. That's just evil, what they did. They don't want to know because they don't care. Because it's not about the Constitution. It's not about the law. It is about political expediency. But every bit as violent as what they did to the Constitution was, it's even more offensive what they did to the American people. Last year, 853 migrants died crossing illegally into this country. That's almost three a day. You go down to the southern border, you go down to Texas, with the Democrats don't bother to do because they don't care 
about the people dying. And you see photograph after photograph that Texas farmers and ranchers are finding of dead bodies on their property. Many of my colleagues here have been down there with me, have seen the elderly people the human traffickers have abandoned, have seen the pregnant women the human traffickers have abandoned, have seen the infants and toddlers left to die. The Senate Democrats just told the American people they don't give a damn about the bodies and the people who have died the last three and a half years, and they don't give a damn about the people that are going to die next week. Next week, more migrants are going to die. When we brought 19 senators down to the border, we went out on a boat in the Rio Grande, we saw a man floating dead in the water. Senator Lee was there. Senator Kennedy was there. He had died that day. The Democrats just told the American people they don't care. When you go down to the border and you look at the children who've been brutalized, just about all of us here are parents. I will tell you, when you look in the eye of a little girl or a little boy who's been abused by traffickers, and you see it, you see the pain, you see the agony of children trapped in sex trafficking, the Democrats just said they don't care. They won't hear the evidence, they don't care that it's deliberate, and they don't care that it'll happen next week, that it'll happen tomorrow. Tomorrow there will be children brutalized because of the Democrats' open border policies, and not a one of them cares. They don't care about the women who are repeatedly sexually assaulted. Again, when you look at the eyes of these women coming over, it's heartbreaking. And the Democrats just said, we don't care. And they don't care about the more than 100,000 Americans that died last year from drug overdoses. The highest in our nation's history. 70% of that is from Chinese fentanyl coming across our southern border. And the Democrats said, we don't want to hear about it. We're not interested in the Americans dying. You know what they also don't care about? They don't care about the criminals that are being released day after day after day. The Biden administration is releasing murderers and rapists and child molesters, and every week we see another story of somebody being killed, somebody being raped, another child being assaulted by illegal immigrants released by Alejandro Mayorkas and Joe Biden. How shocking is it that there wasn't one Democrat who says, you know, massive human suffering matters. We ought to hear the evidence. How shocking is it that there wasn't one Democrat? One! There are 51 of them on that side. Not a single one could screw up the courage to say, let's do our job, let's hear the evidence. How shocking is it that not a Democrat cares about the, about the terrorists who are streaming across our southern border. The nation of Iran has called for jihad against America. Hamas has called for jihad against America. Hezbollah has called for jihad against America. And Joe Biden and the Democrats have put out a red carpet and said, if you want to murder Americans, come across our southern border, and we, the Democrats, will welcome you. Like many of us, on this floor, I was in Washington, D.C. on September 11, 2001. I remember the horror. I lost a good friend, Barbara Olson, who was in the plane that crashed into the Pentagon. I remember the smell of smoke and sulfur and burning. I remember the agony. And I remember the national uni unity that came after 9-11. As Democrats and Republicans came together, I don't know that I've ever been more proud of a president than when President George W. Bush stood on a pile of rubble with a bullhorn talking to firefighters and New Yorkers, and one of, the, one of the men in the crowd called out and said, we can't hear you, and he responded, well, I can hear you, and soon the whole world is going to hear you as well. We were as one. Today, not a single Democrat was able to mount up the courage to tell the majority leader, you know what, I don't want another 9-11 to happen. 
The House impeached Alejandro Mayorkas for, among other things, releasing terrorist after terrorist after terrorist. We ought to hear the evidence. I believe today we have a greater risk of a major terrorist attack on U.S. soil than at any point since September 11th. And every Democrat just told the American people it doesn't matter to them to hear the evidence. I appreciate my Republican colleagues who are here, who are willing to hear the evidence, willing to engage, willing to stand up and defend the American people. But you know what? The Democrats who aren't here, they aren't here because you know who's also not here? If you look up at the gallery, the reporters are all gone. A couple of folks in the back, I hope you're all right. But the reporters are absent. That's the Democrats' plan. What is fascinating, we're presenting arguments. Many of us, particularly those of us in judiciary, but many of us have presented those arguments over and over and over again in hearings. Not a Democrat argues on the other side. It's an issue unlike any other issue I know of in politics. Listen, if we're arguing about taxes, as Republicans, we say we should cut taxes. It's good for the American people. And you know what Democrats do? They stand up. We know they're talking points. No, no, no. Tax the rich. Okay, fine. We have a debate. We're talking about just about every issue. The Democrats will argue on the other side. They have their spin. What is fascinating? Where's Dick Durbin, chairman of the Judiciary Committee, standing up saying, no, no, it's not right that migrants are dying every day. No, it's not right that children are being assaulted every day. No, it's not right that women are being sexually assaulted every day. No, it's not right that they're releasing terrorists every day. They're not there. Not a Democrat is there. Why? Because you cannot defend it. I'll tell you, South Texas for 100 plus years has been a Democrat region of our state. It is turning re red with the speed of a freight locomotive because nobody can see the suffering that is unfolding and defend it. And the Democrats, by their silence and by the complicity of the press corps, they are counting on the press corps to write story. Victory for the Democrats. Yay. They got rid of the impeachment trial. That's the headline they want. Understand they don't have a substantive defense. None of them disputes a word we are saying. Not a single Democrat has stood up and said, you know, it's wrong that Lake and Riley would still be alive if Joe Biden hadn't let her murderer go. They know it's right. The reason they didn't want a trial is they don't want the American people to hear about it. And it's our obligation to make sure the American people do. Senator Cruz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The nub of the Democrats' argument today is that the concept of presidential immunity is somehow unprecedented, is somehow remarkable. That claim is utterly ahistorical and disconnected from the entire constitutional history of the Republic. General Mukasey, before 2023, how many times has the President of the United States been indicted? None. Before 2023, how many times has a former President of the United States been indicted? None. In the last two years, how many times has President Donald J. Trump been indicted? Four times, I believe. Now, many presidents of both parties have engaged in controversial actions, and yet none of them have been indicted. Let me ask you, General Mukasey, if a private citizen were to erect an internment camp and to forcibly kidnap American citizens, to single them out because of race, and to imprison them based on their race, would that private citizen be subject to criminal prosecution? Would. When President Franklin Delano Roosevelt did the exact same thing and erected Japanese internment camps, was FDR prosecuted? He was not. Let me ask you, Similarly, if a private citizen were, say, to detonate a nuclear weapon over a city and kill over 140,000 people, and then if that private citizen a few days later detonated another nuclear bomb over another city and killed 75,000 people, could that private citizen be criminally prosecuted? He would. Was President 
Harry Truman prosecuted for detonating nuclear weapons over Hiroshima and Nagasaki? He was not. All right, how about this? If a private citizen launched a weaponized drone and killed a United States citizen, could that private citizen be criminally prosecuted? He would. Was President Barack Obama criminally prosecuted when he killed United States citizens using drones without notice and without due process? He was not. Although, as far as due process is concerned, I believe the comment of my, of my successor to that question was that Anwar al-Awlaki got, quote, all the process that was necessary. Well, although I suspect he might disagree with that assessment, were he able to, to present his case. Right. Um, all right. Let's contrast that with the rules that govern other federal officials. You were a judge for 19 years. As a federal judge, did you have immunity from your official acts? From my official act, yes. Yeah. Um, do federal prosecutors have immunity from their official acts? They do. Now, the distinction between official acts and personal acts is not a terribly shocking distinction. Un under the decision of Trump versus United States, if any president walks onto, the, walks onto the sidewalk and just shoots a citizen, is that president liable to be prosecuted? He is. How about this? If a president steals funds from his campaign, does that president face criminal liability? He does. How about this? If a president sexually assaults, let's say, an intern uh, in the Oval Office, is the president subject to criminal prosecution for that? He could be. Um, so that distinction, again, is not a shocking distinction. The Founding Fathers vested the executive power in a single president of the United States. What we have seen in the last two years is we have seen Democrats deliberately weaponizing the Department of Justice and our legal system to target their political opposition. It is not an accident that every indictment against President Trump was brought by a Democrat and was brought after he announced his campaign for President of the United States. Understand the target of those indictments was not ultimately President Trump, it was the voters. It was prosecutors who were terrified that the voters would choose to reelect President Trump. One of the great things about the United States is we're not a banana republic. Since 2000, the nation of Pakistan has had six former prime ministers prosecuted and convicted. Brazil has had three former presidents arrested and imprisoned. Last year, Nicaraguan President Daniel Ortega arrested, charged, and imprisoned 40 political opponents. General Mukasey, you are Attorney General of the United States. It is, is it the proper role of the Department of Justice to prosecute and target the political opponents of whoever happens to be President of the United States? It is most assuredly not. Thank you. Sir,